Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Polly Donaldson. I'm director of D.C.'s Department of Housing and Community Development. And on behalf of Mayor Bowser and uh, Deputy Mayor Brian Kenner, I'm delighted to be able to welcome you here to the grand unveiling of one of our key but vacant to vibrant uh, efforts here in the city to transform what was a vacant lot into a productive use and today it's regarding tiny homes now I know first we have a presentation of colors uh, and so I'd like to um, ask the um, uh, the students to do that from from the idea public charter school cadet Corps I'm good. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. That was the members of the cadets from the junior ROTC at IDEA Public Charter School right across the street here. And thank you very much, young people, for honoring uh, uh, us with your presence and honoring our country and flag. Um, I am here, as you know, both the uh, mayor and deputy mayor are addressing the very critical situation related to the fire at the Arthur Capper Homes and our uh, having a, a further briefing. There are 161 residents who need to be rehoused with permanent housing solutions and are being cared for right now in emergency uh, shelters and motels. And so uh, it's uh, critically important that our mayor, who is leading this effort, be there to make sure that our team is uh, producing the number of units needed to house these residents. So again, um, I'm representing and very uh, uh, pleased to be able to be here. This has been an effort, quite frankly, that has uh, been for the Department of Housing and Community Development, a absolutely intense year-long process that we've been had some fantastic staff members that I will be recognizing in a few moments uh, that have worked on this but what I also want to do is acknowledge the community and so to the uh, particularly want to recognize some of the people here uh, members of ANC 7C can you raise your hands please and let us know who is here hello yes Mr. Holmes of course and others as well um, and Commissioner Holmes I'm so delighted that we are able to finally be here on this day rain or no rain we knew that we wanted to be here. Um, as, as well, I have colleagues with me here from other uh, D.C. housing agencies. I believe Todd Lee is here uh, from the D.C. Uh, housing finance agency, and uh, I want to acknowledge him. I also want to acknowledge uh, another partner agency that had 
um, uh, at work here, uh, the Department of Energy and Environment, who helped us very much with the site prep and such. So I do want to thank. Uh, where's Mrs. Robinson? Mrs. Robinson, are you here? She's right at home. She's right next door in her home, very wisely staying dry. Oh, there she is. All right. Hello, Mrs. Robinson. I'm so delighted. Uh, she has been keeping a very watchful eye on this project and is certainly very pleased to see this vacant lot brought back to be a productive site here in the uh, district. I also want to thank the leadership of the Academy of Construction and Design and the D.C. Students Constru Construction Trades Foundation for their critical support of this project. The color guards, we just... Um, we just saw, and they're led by Chief Martin and Sergeant Davis, First Sergeant Davis. And most importantly, Carlton and the other students that you're going to hear from here at the Idea Public Charter School, and the parents and the teachers. And the, the students are the ones who built these houses from the ground up. And so we're going to acknowledge them. And we're going to hear from Carlton in just a minute when I'm, I'm, when I, after I have finished these opening remarks. I think all of you know that D.C. is a growing city. We're now at over 700,000 residents. And we know that there's many fantastic opportunities for our neighborhoods because of that growth. But it also means, and this is the core to the mission at the Department of Housing and Community Development, it also means that we have to be more focused than ever on preserving affordable housing and making building more where we need more affordable housing. And this is a great example of one of the vacant lots owned by the city, owned by the district, that needed to be returned to productive use in this neighborhood. Now, one of the ways that we're able to build more is because we have been making the investments in our housing production trust fund. And as I think of many of you, as many of you know, Mayor Bowser in each of her four years in office has committed $100 million each year that was a commitment she made before while running for mayor, and it's a commitment that she has kept as mayor in terms of put investing $100 million. But the trust fund is just one tool in our toolbox. And I know because uh, I have many staff at the Department of Housing and Community Development who are using multiple tools in our toolkit. Um, and we actually, when you add them all up, and with all the agencies, including the Housing Finance Agency, including our Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, including our Housing Authority, we are actually investing a billion dollars a year in terms of all the housing that our government is doing here. And that is what's going to help make D.C. more affordable for everyone. Um, since 2015... Under Mayor Bowser, we have delivered more than 6,000 units of affordable housing. And over the next five years, we plan to deliver another 10,000. That's good progress, but there's much more to do. And I know I'm quoting the mayor when I say how much more we have to do and that she is committed to doing. And because the housing needs of our residents are so diverse, so are our housing efforts. One of the things that we wanted to do for sure was to say if there was available land and or vacant houses or blighted houses, that we would do everything we could to put those back into productive use, starting with that land owned by the district itself. And so Mayor Bowser, just a, a little bit uh, under a year ago, announced the Vacant to Vibrant D.C. effort. And it's a five-point plan, and this is one of the... Uh, one of the points, but we also we auctioned off about 30 properties that were vacant and blighted that are now in the process of closing and will be um, will become affordable home ownership properties here in the district. We also have a great partnership with the Housing Finance Agency as part of their housing investment program to again create opportunities for home ownership for working families and individuals here in the district. We have done special solicitations for small business enterprises and to be able to bid on and to some of the more um, uh, or the smaller construction firms to give them opportunity to be able to create and build affordable housing here in the district. There was some of our land that we couldn't build on. And so what we've done is given uh, easements to the Casey Trees organization. They're going to preserve that as green space in neighborhoods and communities where it wasn't possible to build on. And then finally, 
we knew that there are innovative and we have to always be open to some of the new ideas that are out there in affordable housing, tiny homes, and I'm sure some of you watch the HG Network and know exactly, probably way more about it than I do, but I can tell you that the tiny homes is one option and it's one of many that we need to really see what is it like in a neighborhood to have a tiny home. And Mrs. Robinson's going to be able to tell you for sure, but also other neighbors as well. And so we know we needed to do that, and that is why we're here today. Now, this project was done in conjunction with the D.C. Students Construction Trades Foundation, the Academy of Construction and Design at the IDEA Pu uh, Public Charter School. We've given these our students tools, not just hammers and nails, although they did a lot of that too, but really the tools through which they're going to be able to secure their future, work hard, develop a career in the construction arena. We know that the construction employment is going to grow 12% through 2026. That's faster than the average for all other occupations. So I'm going to move closer under the umbrella, but I'm also going to let you know that that really is one of the reasons why investing in our our students to be able to work on this really was a bonus with this whole tiny homes project as well. Now, I really, uh, before I introduce uh, Carlton, who's going to come to speak, I do want to acknowledge uh, the DHCD team that worked on this. Chief of Staff Latrina Owens. Latrina, this is your baby. I know this, really. She did a fabulous job. All the DHCD staff, raise your hand. They're here. Gwen Cofield, all of our PAD team, all the folks. Uh, that we have had Robin Henderson working on this as well. I, we really, this is something that we know Mayor Bowser likes. She wanted to see how, what a tiny home would look like because other cities have actually used tiny homes as a way to house uh, populations that maybe don't need as much living space, but they need a safe and secure place to be. But you wanted to know what it's going to look like. So this is a demonstration project that's going to give folks an idea of what a tiny home actually looks like. So what I'd like to do now is um, introduce to you um, a senior at IDEA Public Charter School, Carlton Carroll. And Carlton's going to come talk a little bit about how this experience um, affected him as well. So Carlton, come on up in the rain. Here you go. And I'm going to go this way, and then I'll come back. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm, of course, a senior in this, in this high school. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited to be here today to introduce you to the the, the vacant <laughs> to vibrant event with the tiny houses and minor houses. The Washington, D.C. is growing every day, and lots of people are moving here, as well as the people who live here their whole lives. All of them need places to live. So coming, so coming into this, this year, we have built two different types of homes. One is tiny than the other one. While my classmates and I were building these tiny houses you see right here, we learned about what it takes to be safe and comfortable in the places you live in. We took work, very hard work and took time about this uh, type of event because the fact about it is it's not all about just hammering and drilling. It's all about how the experiences and what you can learn about it. From my experience in this, in this house, it's a lot to go towards other than building and building walls and everything like that. It's about having teamwork and being responsible for whatever it takes for your actions. Um, other than that, my experience is the hardest thing for me was just installing the wall because you have to first you had to use two by fours and then you had to make studs and then you had to you had to install insulation and then after that you had to build drywall. The drywall was the hardest part because you get more messy. Um, other than that, the whole the whole experience of the other tiny house was a good experience for me because the fact about it is that you need you need more you need to go outside more and experience more. You some people don't even know how houses are even created. It's just they just think that it's always just a a type of wood. It's different types of woods in this type of houses right here. Most of these houses out here, there's there's different woods in both of these houses. And I'm very proud I'm very proud to be a part of this community and committed to all representatives safe and affordable housing. And to speak on that, I just I just like to end it off that most people that have these houses, they should be, be able to co be comfortable and live how they want to be, which is happily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you, Carlton. Those were terrific. And I, I know that we know that this experience will stay with all of the young people who worked on this project over, over the course of the past few months, particularly. Now I, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce the director of the Academy of Construction and Design, Shelley Carriam, is here, and she's going to make her way over. Ah, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Broke up all. This is liquid sunshine, and I'm so glad to be here this morning. Um, I had a little injury, as you can see, so I'm on a little bit of medication, so I'm going to read my remarks. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Director Donaldson. Uh, we're grateful to Mayor Bowser, Commissioner Holmes, and the District of Columbia government for inviting the Academy of Construction and Design to contribute to this unique project. All of the micro construction that you'll see here today was built by our students. Students in our Skills Trades Career Program at Idea Public Charter School. Our students took their lessons in construction, technology, math, science, blueprint reading, and carpentry from the classroom to the building site to create imaginative, inviting spaces that feature energy efficient windows, doors, and appliances, plus sustainable interior and exterior finishes that offer low maintenance and long wear. I want to thank the DC Students Construction Trades Foundation Board of Directors and our dedicated CTE teachers. And our teachers are Ian Milne, Sharonda Jones, and Dennis Chestnut for making hands-on building projects possible in our program each year. In particular, please join me in recognizing the Foundation's President, John McMahon, yay, and our recently retired COO, Carol Randolph, who are co-found, where is Carol? Okay, wave Carol. Um, who are, who are our co-founders of the Academy of Construction and Design. Let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Through our visionary leadership and with support from industry training partners, the Academy has a decade plus track record of putting work and college bound students on viable paths to real careers. When students leave the Academy, they're allowed to show hiring, hiring managers and college admission officers that they are, they have, I'm sorry, let's try this again. I'm on pain medication. <laughs> uh, when graduates leave the academy, they are able to show hiring managers and college admission officers that they have already created something of lasting value in their community. I also want, before I move on, I also want to say thank you to my husband, Abdullah Kareem, because I got knocked down and he stood up. You'll see the beautiful interior of, this, of the homes, and he's responsible for that. So I want to just give him a shout out. He's somewhere around here. So thanks, honey. In 2015, the Academy opened a new 10,000 square foot training facility in the unique learning environment at Idea Public Charter School. Now, to hear more about IDEA, please welcome Head of Schools, Justin Ridstrom. Thank you, Mrs. Kareem. Uh, on behalf of IDEA Public Charter School, our Board of Directors, Dr. Calvin Snowden, our Vice Chair, uh, Lakeisha Highsmith, I just want to uh, thank the city for this opportunity, and more importantly, thank the Foundation for their partnership over the last few years. Uh, now in our fourth year of the partnership with the Academy of Construction Design, we're really excited to be here today, not just for uh, the homes that you see behind you and the skills that the students have learned along the way building those tiny homes, but also, more importantly, for the opportunities that they'll have after high school. Um, we at IDEA really believe uh, that college is not the only means, uh, that, that it's college, career, or service. 
and the opportunity to have uh, multiple pathways is, is unique to our model and, and something that we want to be a leader in at this, in this city and we thank the foundation for their partnership in that effort. Uh, and the ability for students to leave IDEA with credentials um, that will serve them in the workplace um, and in any career uh, that they may choose in the future. So on behalf of uh, IDEA Public Charter School, again, I want to thank the foundation uh, and all the partners uh, in the city that made this possible. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over back to the director. All right. Okay, wonderful. Well, I also, I do want to recognize also here from the Mayor's Office of Religious Affairs is the Reverend Thomas Bowen, who is here. Hello, Thomas. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's a really special occasion. Um, last but not least, and this is before the big unveiling, which, again, this is real, and we're going to do this. Uh, but first, I want to bring up uh, the DHCD's Chief of Staff, Latrina Owens, who has a few special remarks she would like to make. Latrina. Hello. So yes, you've heard from the students and from the director. We've been working on this project for the past seven months, uh, prepping the site. And also, as Carlton said, it's not about nails and walls, but it's that about the teamwork. So I really want to thank the PAD team, uh, Stan Fields and Michael Woodson, for really helping to bring this to fruition. And also our team at DCHA, you'll see them out here in the yellow uh, Hugh Triggs leads that team, and they have been instrumental in helping us to get this site. Uh, you see the before picture behind me of the site. Uh, so they've helped us get the site to where it is today. I also want to thank um, Mayor Muriel Bowser for her vision in this initiative. We've definitely been getting to the finish line quick, uh, so that's why I just wanted to come up and personally thank the team and all the staff at DACD, the foundation for their partnership. I see Rod Woodson back here. I just want to acknowledge you. Um, so just, I just wanted to come up and give a personal thank you. And I think we're going to have all the students come up so we can do a photo op before we do the unveiling. So if the idea students could come up. All right. All right, great. It's coming now, folks. But yeah, let's get all these wonderful students up here. Gather around. All right. Watch your heads. All right. What do you need? Everyone over this way? <laughs> okay, watch the. Yeah. You gotta move that. Okay. Yeah, you can't. All right. All right, we good? Are you good? No. Umbrella's up, everybody. Up, up, up. Let me hold it up. Tie a pole. Okay, smile. Everybody look up front. Which way? To the left. All right, good. Thank you all. Okay, we're now about to do... Okay. Do we have our folks behind there? Okay. Okay. So we need to we need to be able to get the picture of this. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that, Mr. Davis. You're welcome. And to the uh, two gentlemen who were here helping me stay a little dry, I appreciate their effort. I hope the arms are you know, build up the strength there. So, uh, which is great. All right. Now, you know how this all works, right? We have to do a countdown. So I want everybody to help with the countdown because then we're going to have the great unveiling. Are we ready? Are you ready to see the tiny house? All right, all right. Well, let's do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we are. Beautiful. Look at them. All right. Let's see her. Let's hear it for the tiny house. Great. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much for coming. And again, this is really an idea to give folks an idea of what this innovative housing tool can do. Thank you all very much and appreciate your coming. Thank you. Thank you.